Good morning and welcome this morning to our morning prayer. We have uh, Vivian, myself and Wilma with us this morning. So it, it's good to, um, for you to join us. So let's just have a few moments quiet. And so we begin. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So let's sing a hymn praising God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. And one reason we can rejoice is that we have a God to whom we can come when we've got it all wrong and he will forgive us. So let's move into our time of confession and your responses uh, are on the screen. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We run away from those who abuse you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord, forgive us. Christ, have mercy. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let's join together in saying the great and wonderful canticle. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. So our Old Testament reading comes from Exodus 32 verses 1 to 14. When the people saw that Moses had not come down from the mountain, but was staying there a long time, they gathered round Aaron and said to him, we do not know what has happened to this man, Moses, who led us out of Egypt. So make us a God to lead us. Aaron said to them, take off the gold earrings which, you, which your wives, your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their gold earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took their earrings, melted them, poured the gold into a mould and made a gold bull calf. The people said, Israel, this is our God who led us out of Egypt. 
Then Aaron built an altar in front of the gold bull and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to honour the Lord. Early the next morning they brought some animals to burn as sacrifices and others to eat as fellowship offerings. The people sat down to a feast which turned into an orgy of drinking and sex. The Lord said to Moses, go back down at once because your people whom you led out of Egypt have sinned and rejected me. They have already left the way I commanded them to follow. They have made a bull calf out of melted gold and have worshipped it and offered sacrifices to it. They are saying that this is their God who led them out of Egypt. I know how stubborn these people are. Now don't try to stop me. I am angry with them and I am going to destroy them. Then I will make you and your descendants into a great nation. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why should you be so angry with your people whom you rescued from Egypt with great might and power? Why should the Egyptians be able to say that you led your people out of Egypt, planning to kill them in the mountains and destroy them completely? Stop being angry. Change your mind and do not bring this disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Remember the solemn promise you made to them to give them as many descendants as there are stars in the sky and to give their descendants all that land you promised would be their possession forever. So the Lord changed his mind and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. This is the word of the Lord. So now please do join in at home with our next hymn, Abba Father, Let Me Be. Abba Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my will forever be more and more yours. Never let my heart grow cold, never let me go. Never, Father, let me be yours and yours alone. So we now we have our gospel reading. And this is a reading from Matthew chapter 22, beginning at the first verse. Jesus again used parables in talking to the people. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. He sent his servants to tell the invited guests to come to the feast, but they did not want to come. So he sent other servants with this message for the guests. My feast is ready now. My bullocks and prize calves have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But the invited guests paid no attention and went about their business. One went to his farm, another to his shop, while others grabbed the servants, beat them and killed them. The king was very angry. So he sent his soldiers who killed those murderers and burnt down their city. Then he called his servants and said to them, My wedding feast is ready, but the people I invited did not deserve it. Now go to the main streets and invite to the feast as many people as you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, good and bad alike, and the wedding hall was filled with people. The king went in to look at the guests and saw a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The king asked him. But the man said nothing. Then the king told the servants, tie him up hand and foot and throw him outside in the dark. There he will cry and grind his teeth. And Jesus concluded, many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, 
I wonder if you ever gone to a social function and found that you were inappropriately dressed. Say you got an invitation from the master gardeners to gather at the local nursery. You skimmed over the fine print and jotted down the time and the place. You figured it had to do with getting the most out of your spring garden. So you throw on your work clothes and look forward to digging in the dirt. But when you walk in the door, lo and behold, everyone else is dressed to the nines. It turns out it's a brunch to kick off the annual membership drive and you're the one of the honoured guests. Whoops. Anyone ever watched Only Fools and Horses when Dell and Rodney burst into a funeral dressed as Batman and Robin? Well, that's a classic. When I began my ministry, one of the church members invited me to lunch. I was wearing my shorts and a sports shirt, which seemed to be dressy enough because they were sports and dressy shorts. But instead of going to one of the places near the church I thought we were going to go to, we drove into town, parked in a parking garage and took a lift to the top floor of a building to a really nice private club. Well, the major E took one look at me and said, hmm, I think we may have a coat to fit you, at least in the cloakroom. Well, I've never been more embarrassed in my life. Being inappropriately dressed can be a nightmare, literally. Ever had this happen to you? You could wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. You've had a dream that you were giving a speech or presentation, or in my case, a sermon, only to realise that you were standing in front of everybody dressed in your pyjamas. Well, today's sermon is about being properly dressed, but it's not about what you wear to church or work or school. It's about being clothed in righteousness of God. And what I hope you'll get out of this, while God is perfectly willing to clothe us in the garments of Christ, is up to us to put them on and wear them faithfully to the glory of God. The scripture comes from a couple of parables neatly tied together. The first has to do with a king who wanted to give a big wedding banquet for his son. So he invited all his friends and political allies. It was to be a royal festive occasion. But as the servants returned from the neighbouring kingdoms, they brought back only rejections. The king thought there must be some mistake because in those days to reject a royal invitation was tantamount to a declaration of war. He gave his allies the benefit of the doubt and sent his servants back to tell them that the wedding banquet was prepared and for them to come at once. The would-be guests not only refused the second invitation, they made light of it. They even taunted and ridiculed the king's servants. Well, when word got back to the king, he was furious. He summoned his troops and went to war against his now-declared enemies. And once they were defeated, he returned to his kingdom more determined than ever to give his son a proper wedding banquet. He sent his servants into the cities, inviting people off the streets to come to the palace. And sure enough, common folk poured into the palace to celebrate the marriage of the prince. In the context of Matthew's gospel, the parable explains why God turned from the Jews and gave the promise of salvation to the Gentiles. They accepted Jesus as the Christ. The Jews refused. The early church got the message. The kingdom of God is at hand. The table is spread and the banquet hall must be filled. But Luke tells the same parable in a similar, less militant way. According to Luke, the host invited three friends, but each was predisposed. One had just bought some land, another five yokes of oxen, and another just had gotten married. Well, given the particulars, each had a reasonable excuse not to come. But either way, the message is the same. The kingdom must go on. God is at work reconciling the world to himself. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ is to make him your first priority, to offer the first fruits of our time, our talent, our gifts and service. 
the good news is the kingdom of God is at hand and we are the honoured guests. And the word to the wise, dress accordingly. God is calling us now more than ever to put on Christ and bear witness to his grace and his love in the world around us. So put on the garments of Christ, clothe yourself in compassion, in kindness, in humility, in gentleness, in patience and in love. Amen. So let's join in in heavenly love abiding. In heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear, and safe is such confiding, for nothing changes here. The storm may roar without me, my heart may long be laid, but God is round about me, and can I be dismayed? Wherever he may guide me, no one shall turn me back. My shepherd is beside me, and nothing can I lack. His wisdom ever waketh, his sight is never dim. He knows the way he taketh, and I will walk with him. Now, let's join together and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, invited by God, let us voice our prayers for the church and for the world. So we pray firstly for ourselves and all Christian people. Father, when either the traditional or the progressive blinds us to the truth of your will, clear our vision and speak through our prejudices until we are once again open to your changing. May we be, before anything else, your people, sharing your concerns and desires. And as our own diocese looks at the future pattern for church life, for how we are the church, help us not to just stand up for what we want and we hold dear, but to be open to your leading. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we're all well aware of the news that swirls around us in our own country, from America, from further afield. In a moment of quiet, just call to mind those items from the news that are particularly close to your heart at this time. Father, we recognise how powerful the influences are in our world, which distract many and lead away from your truth. We pray for the quiet whisper of your wisdom to be noticed and acknowledged in many lives. We pray for widespread discipline of the heart, a new openness to generosity of spirit. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in our own lives, we cannot but be aware of anxiety, of busyness, of uncertainty, and not knowing what we can and can't do. Father, may our homes and daily schedules be part of the territory of your kingdom, where it is your will which guides and your love which rules. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And whilst we complain and compare ourselves and our wants, we only have to look further afield to know there are many who suffer more than we do. And we pray for them now. Father, our hearts rail against the cruelty and unfairness of suffering and disease. And we stand now alongside all in pain and weep with them, crying out to you for comfort and the healing of your love. For you are no bringer of evil to our lives, but share our sorrow and give us the grace to bear it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we'll be aware of those who have died recently, those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Father, as death takes from us those we love, and we find it hard to live without them, take from us all bitterness of heart, and let us share with them the peace you give over which death has no power at all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we return to pray for ourselves. Father, it is such an honour to be invited to your banquet. Make us worthy of our calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect. God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So as we come towards the end of this morning prayer, can I remind you that we have a Zoom service tonight and you should have had the link through on email. If you haven't, then get in touch with me or someone else and we'll give you the link. And we'll be thinking about the life of St. Francis. So another chance to sing some harvest hymns, actually. So do join us at five o'clock tonight. But now we're going to finish with a hymn that I know is a favourite of many people, How Great Thou Art. <clears throat> O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand has made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think, 
king, that God his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And so now we come to our final blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In, In the name of Christ. Amen.